Hey guys, welcome uh, welcome again to another episode of the Blue Water Cruising Podcast. Uh, super excited today. I'm here with Brian and Anne. Uh, they were one of our first clients early on in the programs that we ran. They were part of a program called the Confused to Captain program. Uh, we're talking to them now. They're here on their boat in Florida. Uh, it's been a bit of a journey for them to get to where they're at, which we're going to dive into today. Uh, they came through the program and decided to buy what we could describe as a little bit of a project boat. Um, and there's been some trials and tribulations they've gone to to get to the point that they're at where they're pretty much ready to cast off and go now. But I'll let them share the story. Um, and before we dive into that, I um, want to do an intro of you guys. So I'll let you guys introduce yourself. Maybe start with where where you're from um, and and what it was that possessed you to make the crazy leap into the world of, uh, of blue water cruising. Okay. Yeah. So um, I, I guess it, it kind of started with, with, um, with me. So we're both from kind of landlocked states. I'm from Vermont and Anne's from Ohio. You know, so this idea of, you know, you know living on the water and, you know, cruising and sailing and traveling um, just was kind of this like, you know, far-fetched dream, you know, that's cause kind of always in the back of, of my mind, at least uh, for a long time. You know, and, a lot of it only started with this, like, I just want to, I just want a boat so I get out of the water. And then, then you know, that's just like kind of the dream just grew, grew from there, really. Um, and I, I lived in uh, uh, Juneau, Alaska for a year or two. Um, and that was the first time where I, I actually saw people like living on boats, you know, at a, like a marina and, you know, like kind of living that sailing lifestyle. And so as I realized that's a, like a real thing, you know, it's a, it's a possibility, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not completely out of my mind so i was like so something that i always kind of tried to chase um and then when i moved to florida you know i kind of felt like that was like the perfect place to like actually start building it um so that's kind of what I, I you know set my mind to when i when i moved to florida was was, was trying to trying to build the idea of you know living on a on a sailboat and sailing and cruising um just to you know get out there and kind of have a different nomadic lifestyle and Anne, what yeah. about what about you? Similar sort of thing or different for you? Um, so I didn't um, have um, the like Alaska experience that he did, but um, my family had um, small monohulls, like what twenty five footer, I think, mm-hmm. uh, growing up, and um, we just sailed that around in a little lake. Um, but when he brought up the uh, whole living on a boat idea, I was like, okay. So I, I like know a little bit of what to expect, but, um, and it kind of helped us gear a little bit more towards, uh, the catamarans because I knew I didn't like monohulls that much personally. Um, but, uh, I'm always for adventure. My parents have always, um, made sure that we've had some sort of an adventure mainly, uh, on land for us. And, you know, we've done like a little bit of cruising here and there, but, um, when he was bringing up all the adventure stuff with me, it was like, yeah, let's, let's go, let's do this. Yeah. And, cool. and really, until, I, until I met Anne, I don't, I didn't even, I didn't even know cat, a catamaran was a thing, <laughs> you know? So like, and then she introduced me. I was like, well, like, look at the, these types of boats. Like mm-hmm. it's like huge and it's stable and it's like really you know, a lot nicer to live on. So like the, you know, it, the dream grew from like living on a little sailboat to like maybe getting a trawler to like, mm-hmm. holy crap, like look at these huge yeah. catamarans. <laughs> like this is cool. You know? So it's, amazing. Just it snowballed, but mm-hmm. in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What does it represent for you, the dream? Uh, you know, the idea of the idea of going cruising. Like, what was the catalyst there? Why? Why I mean, was? Why I think cruising? my like, w- like what it means to me is like you know, I like like the like the freedom aspect of it. You know, mm-hmm. like you, you know, once you like. Every time like, I've gone through parts of my life where I've owned a boat and where I haven't, and every time I own a boat, my world goes from like this big to like this big. Mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 like completely like I bought a little skiff in Alaska. You know, like I was, you know, for the first six months, you know, I didn't own a boat and I can, you know, I was just like thumbing around town. But then I owned a boat and I was like, holy crap, I can go anywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, I can go camping mm-hmm. out on this island. I can go and do that. You know, I can go fishing. You know, like all these like cool things that I love to do because I love being on the water. So it's just like, like owning a boat for me just like opens up my whole world. You know, and like right. being able to like, you know, and you know, like, like it was hard for me to own a big boat, you know, and I was just, and when I saw the idea, I was like, well, you can live on it, you know, then you can then like, then I can afford to do it if I live on it, you know? So like, it's, it just, just seemed to like, it's just screamed to me, you know, the whole idea of, of living on a boat and, and cruising and sailing. Right. So and, cool. and, also and the tranquility to it as well, you know, you're out there and 
um, yeah, just just you in the water, and it's just a, a very zen thing, too. Until something breaks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's zen moments. <laughs> there are. Yes. There really are. Yeah. And there's more of those now that you know, things are going well, like well. So, so right. it's really it's it's been good. There's very zen moments. Yeah, I mean it's it's high the high high highs and low lows. Is, yeah. is how oh. I is how I describe it. Yeah, but yeah, the highs you, are really high. Yes, the highs are really high, and like like morale is a real thing. Like like mm-hmm. yeah. when something goes wrong, it's like it it crushes you. Like mm-hmm. it really does. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Um, okay, well, let me know. I mean, I think it'd be interesting for people that are watching. Th- we get comments a lot as to like how you guys actually made this happen. You know, you said the dream kind of blossomed a bit or it, or it snowballed a little bit into something bigger than it, you know, was originally, Oh, a little sailboat and then a trawler. And now it's this, this big catamaran that you're on embarking on this journey. And so how did that, how did that snowball happen? And then how did you guys make it happen? Like what are the steps that you took to go about making that happen? Um, logistically, practically, financially, uh, I know people are always really curious to th- see how people actually do this. Yeah. So like logis- logistically and like, I, I just kind of like motivation was like, you know, like we watched, you know, Zatara and like a lot of the Gatamaran channels. And it's a really like demonstrate that, you know, it's, it's a real possibility and it's, it's, it's not, you know, it's so far fetched. Um, and then kind of like logistically, like w- when I was in Florida, I was really big into, you know, you know, the first house I ever bought was the most rundown, tiny crappy house you could ever imagine you know and i was like i'm gonna fix this house you know and either sell it or you know rent it out so that i can you know go towards this dream of, of sailing and, and cruising yeah. and um and i kind of got ann on board with that when, especially when she started realizing that like i was serious like no this is like because <laughs> we met in um in florida um and i think it was like 2019 you know mm-hmm. when i was kind of like halfway right through COVID fixing this house up. I was like, oh, I'm going to fix this house up and sell it and, and you know, I'm going to go live on a boat. Mm-hmm. You know, and eventually she realized I was serious. I started looking more into it. And she was like, all right. So then, then we did the same thing with the house for her. So it was like, mm-hmm. they like, all right, so we'll buy another rundown crappy house, you know, it'll be that much closer, you know, pe- to being able to afford it or like, you know, if we rent it out, that might help, you know, finance like, you know, the journey yeah. and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Uh, yeah. So like, that's kind of how we, like slowly, you know, built it to be possible. Right. You know? Cool. And so, well, and on so, top sorry, of it too, with COVID, we got the whole work from home experience too. And um, cause one thing, like we're only in our, you know, thirties. And so it, we can't just think about, you know, upping and leaving our jobs. Um, so with COVID happening and the whole working from home uh, benefit and the fact that they just, let us keep working from home because you know we're we're making it work fine and so it makes this dream um you know more of a reality for us that in that way too you know as long as we stay you know on the coast which is you know more than reasonable for us yeah yeah, for now um you know eventually we'll want to go on and go you know more island hopping and all that but in the meantime like this, this works for us. Yeah. Well, we're still building the boat and exactly. you know, still keep our jobs and things like that. So it's just, I, I just want to stop you there really quick. Cause there's a couple of, of really cool things in there. Um, a was you guys met in 2019 and then put this plan together and we're now what we're 2023. So that's not a very long time. Um, you know, as we, we have people that, that, that we talk to and they've been planning this for like 15, 20 years, <laughs> you know, never mind. Like, yeah. Hey, <laughs> meet, meet in 2019 and less than five years later you're buying a catamaran <laughs> to live on and go cruising together like yeah. it's pretty yeah. rad it's yeah. pretty awesome was quick. um <laughs> yeah no it's cool it's <laughs> super cool um and, and so we, i mean we, we debated that for a long time we we're like you know like like we could keep you know at our job save money like mm-hmm. live another house or two and probably buy a better boat you know but it's like or we can buy this one you know it's it sucks you know it's, it's we know it's gonna suck you know, but we almost got it for nothing. And we're like, you know, we'll figure it out. It might take a year or two, but you know, like then at least in the meantime, we have a boat and we're learning it, you know, because mm-hmm. by now I know everything about this boat. Mm-hmm. You know, I've, yeah. I've been through every corner. I've swapped engines out, done, done everything. Yeah. You know, so like, yeah. there's like, there's nothing on the boat that we're afraid of as far as, you know, physically or systems, you know, yeah. so it's, it's, it's been a benefit to buy it early. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just figure it out, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I love that. I mean, it's we say it all the time. It's like go now. <laughs> you know, like right. there's the only yeah. con, the only true constraint is health. Everything mm -hmm. else is figure outable. Like you guys are a classic example. You know that the didn't have the maximum budget that some people have, and it's like, but you found a way to use the skills that you had. And I love that what you said about you know you bought a crap house and renovated it, and and you know maybe you held onto it or flipped it or whatever you did, but that skill set gave you something. You basically just done the same thing with a boat. <laughs> you know, you're like, yeah. hey, I can do right. this in a house. It, and, and it gave us the ability to like look through, especially the aesthetic things. Because when we walked on this boat, like there was like there was black mold, you know, the the cushions were torn apart. And, you know, it's just like, you know, like we can look through those things, mm -hmm. you know, like, like, is it floating? Like, are, are like some things working, you know, like, like we know an engine works, we know like this and that, and like, like the sails look okay, mm -hmm. you know, so like, we could look through like the, the grime and say like, there's a boat under here. You know? Right. And, right. Yeah. Was there a moment? And, and when was that, if there was a moment of the decision that you guys were like, all right, we're doing this, we're going to make this happen. You know, you, you met 2019, you had some discussions. I, and, I think it was after we saw this particular boat. Yeah. I think we, we took all of an hour maybe. Yeah. We, <laughs> we took about an hour to pull the trigger because it was such a low price that people were lining up out this guy's door. You know, he was like, they were like, I don't care if it's floating, I'll, I'll buy it and whatever. You know, and this, we were there first and he was like, well, I'll give you like a few hours, you know, but there are people already sitting in his driveway, you know, like, so <laughs> we kind of had to make, we kind of had to make a quick decision and, you know, we knew, we knew we weren't going to get a survey. We weren't going to get a sea trial. Uh -huh. We were going to get, you know, we trust this owner, which we was a really good guy. We got mm -hmm. to know him really well that day. We really trust him. He went through the whole boat and said, you know, here's the things that I know is wrong, yeah. which is really cool. He, he didn't yeah. hide anything. And he goes, I guarantee you when you start turning things on, all these things, all these parts are going to work. So, like, he was super honest. And you can kind of see he was being transparent, which was cool. And he, he didn't want to sell the boat to somebody who, like, couldn't, didn't, wasn't going to be able to handle it. Like, he, was, he was a really honest yeah. guy. So that helped us feel comfortable. And I think I think we're halfway through your your captain's class, the first one. You know, and I, I, it might have been Keith who said it. He said, I was like, you know, you just need to get after the biggest boat because you're going to want the space, you know. And he was, he was kind of gearing towards, you know, the survey is kind of a waste of time. So, you know, so like, like you could skip that if you if you feel comfortable with it, which, you know, if somebody took a survey of this boat, like we know that what they're going to say, like everything's mm -hmm. that, yeah. you know, so it, it wasn't worth it for us to do a survey. Um, yeah. It was just kind of like, it was a, it was a huge boat that we knew was going to work out long term. That was in our price range, you know. So are we going to do this now, or you know, we looked for like a year and a half yeah, to a find a boat half. like this that yeah. we could afford. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, it could have been another year until we found another one. Like, and we and we saw <laughs> actually just the day prior um, a catamaran across the state um, for much more money and more damage, honestly, and not taken care of and stuff and. And so it made this decision a lot easier too. It's like the price is, you know, right. And, you know, like, like he said, we can look past a lot of things because of, you know, our experience with the homes and all that. And, you know, it just, it just every, all the puzzle pieces seem to go into place, yeah, honestly. Infinite. Okay, amazing. So then, okay, so that was the moment you're like, okay, we're in, we're doing this, we're buying this boat. Um, and it, it's, it's, I mean, we would call this boat like an opportunity boat, I think, you know, it, it, you've said it, it has some serious issues, it needed some work, but it was at the right price that you could mm -hmm. invest mm -hmm. the money into it to be able to get it to a point that you wanted over a period of time that fit your budget and get you guys a boat that, 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 that is going to work for you to go, to go cruising on. So it's not, it, it, that's a bit, it's interesting because it's a bit non-standard. Um, there's not that many people that go that route. But I can totally see how it fits. I mean, it's so what we say all the time. It's like it fits. You have to find the boat that fits you, you know. And this boat fit sounds like it fit where you guys were at, um, which is the right deal. So okay, so then tell me a little bit about. So you bought it, and you had some. I would assume you had some expectations around how things were going to go when you bought it. Or you had a little bit of a plan, um, and I know it's been a bit of a bumpy road for you guys. Um, and so maybe walk me through that, like how that's gone buying a project boat and yeah, what, just what that journey's kind of been like for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, we, we knew it was going to be bumper road. So we, we bought the boat and it, this, this guy let us stay in his, um, backyard in the canal for however many 
weeks and months that we needed to get it going and feel comfortable getting it to a uh, um, boatyard in the Keys. Um, How long so did he let you stay? As long as we needed to. He just he was just like, you can just stay and hang out and work on the boat and yep. live and work in... on the boat in the backyard. <laughs> yeah. Wow. He That's can nice. Work on the canal. Yeah. Because what he was... knew he wasn't going to be able to move because he, like, he hadn't started the engines in a couple of years or, you know. And what, the big, big thing on it was somebody tried to steal that boat out of his mm -hmm. backyard and they tried to pull it around, pull it out of the canals with a skiff and it got blown up against a seawall and it snapped one of the sail dries off. Uh, uh, so he kind of gave up on the boat and it sat there for a couple of years. Um, so like, he knew that it, it was like, it was going to be take a while to get it going and he didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. He was like, if you want to come here, you know, every weekend or however long you want, you know, get it going. He said, he helped me and yeah, you know, that's what we did. So what was, what was his deal? This is a bit of a, a random aside. Like he bought this boat and was it broken when he bought it as well and his intent was to fix it up or it somehow just got destroyed or not totally destroyed but it got no, damaged no, well. he, 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 go he had chartered it or he, he had it in st martin for a long time and he um, rented it out as a charter boat um and then he sailed it up to uh put to Gorda where he lives um and it was fine and he had it in his backyard and he was using it on and off and um just i guess they had that mishap and someone tried to steal it and wrecked it yeah um and he just kind of gave up on it he was ready to you know to get rid of it you know, be, done, be done with the catamaran thing and his fine land and linen stuff so mm -hmm. he was just like i'm i don't have the idea to do this wow <laughs> interesting i mean i get it i get it you get to a point right. where you're just like okay time to move on <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Need, needs the boat needs new energy invested into it, and you yeah. happen to yeah. show up and be prime candidates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And he was helpful too. I mean, yeah. if, if there was something like I didn't know how to turn the bilge pumps on, and he was he came in and there was another switch underneath one of the seats that turned them all on. I was like, you know, it would take me a week to figure that out. Yeah. So like he would come on board and they show us a few things here and there and help us. So it's, it was a really good relationship with him, which, yeah. which was helpful. Yeah, and okay. everything he said was going to work, worked. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe not right away, but it worked. It did, you know. Yeah. Like, cool. And when I mean not right away, I mean it, it was based on art in, in experience. <laughs> of, of how to make it work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were driving back and forth from Cocoa Beach where we lived to Boots, Florida every weekend every week. for until September when we finally felt comfortable leaving. Yeah. Um, but yeah. You were driving, and how far is that drive? Three hours? Three, three and a half hours. Uh, the, mo the straightest, most boring road in Florida. <laughs> Just this flat road. Set it literally goes 70, straight. Route 70 all yeah. the way through Florida. They, that's where they grow all the sod on the sides of the yeah. road. It's three hours one way. One way. One way. We did so you were, every driving weekend. you were driving six hours return every weekend and to go work on the boat? Yes. Every weekend. Oh every week. Yeah. We were at a point where we were working remotely, but we, you know, it's still good to show your face at work and like, like yeah. we had responsibilities in the office and you know, some responsibilities at home. So like we, we had to go back almost every week. Yeah. We couldn't work on it full time. Yeah. Wow. And how, how is that like, this is a bit, bit a bit of a sidestep on it a bit, but I'm curious just cause it, this comes up a bit for people that we work with. How is that for your guys' relationship? That kind of, that kind of. I mean, there's a bit of stress there, you know, you're, you, you're, you're working and then in the time that you have off, you're driving and then you're going to the boat and you're working on the boat. Like, how did you guys find navigating that as a couple? Yeah, it, I mean, it was really hard. It was, it was like mm -hmm. extremely stressful. We basically binded our, you know, all of our free time, you know, to, to you know, going out to the boat and getting it going. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it, I mean, it got old quick driving three and a half hours each way every weekend. Um, but you know, we, we were just super excited to like that we found the right boat and mm -hmm. like, we were very motivated. So we just, we kind of just kept doing it every weekend and, you know, you know, we, we committed to it. So you can't just leave the boat out there. <laughs> so it's just like, now we have a responsibility to do it, you know, cause it's there. So it just, we kept, we just kept doing it. Um, right. And we we really celebrated the small wins, like like mm -hmm. like we flicked the bilge pumps on. I was like, oh my god, they actually work, you mm -hmm. know? Like because we were pumping the bilges by hand for for weeks, you know? Like so, like every small win, like 
like really was like, oh my god, this is that much easier now. And like, like now we can move on to the next thing. And like, like we, that really is what got us going. Yeah, definitely. And when you say celebrated the small wins, did you like do something to celebrate them, or like, yeah, or did you just? How did you acknowledge them when you celebrated the small wins? What was it? Oh. I mean, in a uh, in those gators. In Puta, yeah, because in yeah in Puta Gorda, yeah, <laughs> in Puta Gorda, right. we went to the same restaurant every night because we couldn't cook on the boat. We could have like snacks and stuff on the boat, but so if we wanted to eat, you know, we we went out to the same restaurant, um, and we kind of just went over, you know, what like here's the things we won this like today, you know, and, mm-hmm. and kind of celebrated it, um, you know. Obviously, we had setbacks, you know, two steps forward, one step back, the whole way. Mm-hmm. Um, so we kind of went over that basically every single day. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's, you know, that's what we <laughs> were doing. So that's what we had to yeah. t- discuss but, at the end of the day. But then eventually it was two steps forward, one step back. Yeah. Not, you know, it started getting better and better and better. And yeah. yeah. We started realizing we were winning more than we were losing. Yeah. You know, like today, like yeah. we did five things. Like that's incredible. Like usually we don't do one thing. Like, exactly. <laughs> so like. <laughs> yeah, like I think we, we patched the dinghy and we put the, we put the engine on in one day. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like. And then, yeah. and then you had this, I would also assume you had kind of a, a pretty compelling vision of what you guys, you know, the reason that you wanted to do this um, was driving you forward as well. Cause yeah, we, we really, we really, really wanted it. We love, we love the plan that we put together. You know, we, we, we really, really wanted this lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So we just, we just put our heads down and did it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And motored through. And how long did yeah. it take you? <laughs> to what? To get the boat to a point where you could sail it. <laughs> yeah, we got a timeline. Uh- <laughs> we bought it. We bought it late June of last year, and we left for Key West mid September, like mm-hmm. September fifteenth ish. That's so not too that bad. Was- so like four months. Four months. Yeah. Yeah. And towards the end of that four months too, we were really pushing hard too because we knew. Hurricane season was picking, you know, going to pick up soon. You know, it's always the the later portion of hurricane season that kind of starts to get dicey in Florida. So we knew we had to to get somewhere. (laughs) Yeah, I'm impressed. I mean, four months to get take a boat that is non sailable to get it sailable and get it out of there is like incredibly quick. Yeah, Um, I mean, it wasn't great when we left. It was no. it we was, still had to get a sea tow out of out to the sound. Yeah, we uh, we couldn't because we only had one engine, so we had to get towed out to the sound, and then we started plugging along on one engine and mm-hmm. put the sails up, and they started. And this was our first sea trial, and we we're going to Key West, yeah. <laughs> you know. And we were like, ah, oh, things are kind of checking out as we we're leaving, so we we're like, let's just keep going, you know, it's, yeah. it's going okay. We had a couple of captains helping us, which was really mm-hmm. good, um, just people from work, but it just. I mean, it was it was a brutal journey to get to Key West. A mm-hmm. lot of things went wrong. Um, yeah, but yeah. the, the I mean, mainsail ripped. Um. <laughs> I mean, yeah, our mainsail ripped. <laughs> Anti siphon valve uh, yeah, cracked. Yeah, we had a leak in the engine <laughs> that we had to fix. The one engine that we had working. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but there was an anti siphon valve in there that cracked. And the water heater. The water heater ruptured, <laughs> and all of our fresh water dumped into the bilge, but they didn't have a bilge pump. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Wow. And it took me to figure out where the water was coming from. I was like, and, yeah. I, and I, was, I was bailing it out by hand, knee you know, deep. and <laughs> yeah, knee deep in the bilge, and knee deep in the bilge. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, bailing out by hand, and I got a mouthful of water just by mistake because I was panicking. I was like, I don't know if this boat's sinking or what's going on. I realized it was fresh water, and I was like, Thank God, <laughs> it's fresh water. You know, that means so, only one thing. Cause wow. Just, Things were in like the, like the boat had never been tested before. You know, like we got a lot of it running, but you know, just bringing it out there and having it you know, rock around and it just breaks everything. You know, because mm-hmm. it hadn't moved moved in two years. You know, so yeah. we did everything we could, and we got to a point in Punta Gorda where we we're like, well, I don't know what else to do besides go out and try it. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. yeah. So that's what we did. And what's what's good about getting the captains too that helped us is that you know we had all the the emergency prep ready like mm-hmm. you know when when he ha- was um, dealing with the hot water heater like they had they made him buy a really good pump emergency pump to yeah, start getting the water out and yeah so, so 
There was there was some thinking behind. Yeah, there was there was there was a lot. Yeah, you, it sounds like you did yeah. some planning and preparation. I think. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think there's some people that'll listen to the story and be like, "You guys are absolutely insane." That's crazy. Um, yeah, but well, it's I, so crazy. I, I, <laughs> But, well, it, yeah. In some ways, it's crazy, but it, it yeah. you know, we were, it's, we were, it's we were completely relying on a big set of backup systems, mm-hmm. you know, because none of the primary systems were working perfectly. So we had all these backup plans, you know, which ended up being primary plans, you know, by the end of the journey. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just we didn't know what else to do in Punta Gorda besides go, yeah, because yeah. we that was well, it, you, know, you, had, to get, to you had to get the boat out, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it got to a point where the the next big things that needed to be done needed to happen at a hollow. Yeah, and yeah. we couldn't do that in Punta Gorda. There was nothing that could yeah. take our beam. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, I I totally get it. It makes sense. Um, so, how would you describe then, like, if you were to go back and put yourselves back, let's say in 2019 when you guys first met and had this lovely conversation around the blue water cruising life and how that was going to look. Um, to the reality of what you've gone through since June of last year, getting this boat ready to go. Um, does, does it meet up? Are you like, how? Yeah. No, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think it was, it's, it's all worth it. Been worth it. Still worth it. Um, I don't think that I, it, now that we've gotten to a point now where we're actually moving with the boat, like we've, We've now gone from Key West to Marathon to Key Largo to Fort Pierce to now St. Augustine. And I don't feel like we're compromising in any aspect whatsoever. If, on, if anything, like this is better than um, living on land. You know, we, we still go home now and then to, you know, check on his house, you know, since it's getting rented out and show our face at work and all that. And it's like, let's go back to the boat. Let's go back. <laughs> so cool. Like, yeah, it, it's it's more than worth it. Yeah, I, I think we really went into it no, knowing it was going to be a wreck. So, yes. so when it yeah. was a wreck, you know, we we're like, yeah, like, well, I think we knew that this was going to happen, you know. But we didn't. I mean, we didn't know exactly what was going to go wrong, but we knew we were going to struggle. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah. we kept kind of like falling back on that, and you know, as, and the, as things are getting better, and they're getting better a lot faster, you know, with like 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 Anne was saying, like our like we're now moving quicker. You know, and like, in, and instead of the entire passages, like looking around, waiting for things to go wrong, we're like, we're fishing. Mm-hmm. You know, we're like, we're we're, yeah. we're we're starting to actually do the things that we wanted to do. You know, and having fun. Mm-hmm. You know, we caught a mahi on our last passage, and you couldn't believe how excited we were. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we're oh, we're reeling in fish instead of bailing out our bilges. Like, this is crazily <laughs> better. You know, like it's just, it's it's really like turned out great. Um, but it, it was hard and we, we expected it to be hard. So I think, I think you, you've really nailed something with that though. Cause we, we, we hear from people, uh, often that, that go cruising and they stop cruising and, you know, they end up divorced or they end up like one of the family members wants to keep going cruising. The other one doesn't. Um, and it often, I, well, not often, I think almost every single time it boils down to setting expectations. And it sounds like you guys went in with really clear expectations. You know, there was no like beating around the bush of, hey, this was going to this is going to be different than what it, what the reality of it is. And in some ways, it was even more in your face because you were buying a wrecked boat. Um, right. So it was like, yeah, we're going to as opposed to somebody who's buying not a wrecked boat and thinks everything's going to go a lot smoother than it is, because even if you have a not wrecked boat, it still doesn't go that smooth when you start, right. you know? exactly. but you just, <laughs> you just had it right in your face that, Hey, there's no way this is going smooth, <laughs> which I think yeah. is, is, yeah. is I mean, actually... it, it, it's, it's true though. I mean, it, like, like the stress and like the constant, you know, day after day after day of, you know, fighting with the boat, you know, it, it does add strain to your relationship, mm-hmm. you know, like it, it, it did, you know, through that, like right between us a lot, you know, it was, it was, there were a lot of challenges, you know, relationship wise, even, even mm-hmm. though we were ready, you know, for it to be very difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, so like it's, it, yeah. Even though the expectation we, we was set. With anything. Was, that's what we, no, that's, yeah. that's what we yeah. keep telling each other. It's like, it's like, you know, like, like we really got a boat for cheap, but like, like, like we paid, mm-hmm. you know, in other ways. Um, there's so, a cost for sure. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's, there's the cost that you paid to 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 get the boat at the price you got the boat. 
uh, as far as the stress and everything you endured. Plus, there's the cost that everybody pays to make the decision to change their, their life and, and live this different lifestyle. There's a whole bunch of costs that, that come along yeah. with that as, as well. Um, but And then you stacked on top of that an extra, <laughs> an extra ticket <laughs> as buying the boat that you yeah. guys bought. So cool. I think, too, like um, finding the humor in certain things, mm-hmm. too, like helps a lot with our relationship. Um, like, yeah, it hasn't been, you know, easy in, in the, you know, the entire time, but, you know, we've, we've been able to find some sort of a humor in a lot of things. Yeah. Um, like, like, like uh, uh, Kenny Chesney song, um, Better Boat, you know, we would be going back and forth, Punta Gorda, and it, that song's about, you know, it's, it's a more deeply about something <laughs> else, but we took it literally about making a better boat. <laughs> all the things that go wrong with it. Yep. Just, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's and, awesome. And, and laughing at our, at our mistakes. Yes. If you don't know anything about, about a boat, you're going to do things two, three, four times mm-hmm. every time. And uh, you get, you just kind of, you got to know that that's going to happen. And, you know, like, and you got to laugh at them. Like we were trying to lift our, uh, um, outboard engine onto our dinghy and it and we dropped it in the water because we, we didn't know how to run the halyards right and you know do the you know what you do to lift up engines and stuff like that and we dropped the thing in the water and of course it doesn't work anymore but we're just like okay well now we know not to do that you know and like we kind of have a, like brush off you know the, the mishaps and laugh about it and you know keep going i mean it's how you learn right <laughs> it's 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 how you learn yeah. yeah like it's it's i watched this um it's not really related to boating but i watched this this interview the other day uh there was a ed sheeran pretty famous singer um and he he was doing an interview with howard stern and uh and howard stern says to him he's like oh it must be amazing like you know you you the talent like you have, um, you must have been born with it. Like you could sing your entire life and you sang amazing. Um, and Ed Sheeran looks at him. He's like, no, he's like, no, you're, you're dead wrong. And he, and he tells him, he's like, do you have YouTube? And, and Howard Stern's like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, go YouTube this, YouTube this video. And it's a video of Ed Sheeran when he's 14 years old singing and he's terrible. <laughs> like, it's like, you know, he's just, it's, he's terrible. And he's like, I was terrible. And then, you know, Howard Stern's like, well, how did, how did you do it? How did you, how did you get to where you're at? And he's like, I failed. He's like, I failed. You know, I went out there and, and, that, and he's like that video, I was 14. He's like four years later when I was 18, I wrote the A team and it was a number one hit. And he's like, but in four years I went out and I failed my way to learning how to play the guitar, to learning how to sing, to learning how to song write. And I put myself out there and failed my way to do it. And that's the only reason I know how to do it. Yeah. Um, and I think it's the same it's the same thing for, you know, for learning anything for what you guys do. The only way to, to do it is to drop the outboards in the water, to rip sails, to break sails. Right. Right. <laughs> it's the only way you really, really do learn. So, um, so that's cool. Um, yeah, cause I mean, then by the end of it, we, we had to swap an engine out and like, and we didn't have money to have somebody else do that. So we, mm-hmm. we got the engine rebuilt, you know, and we, we swapped the engine out ourselves, you know, cause, and by the time, you know, we were at that point, you know, we know how to take the boom, lift the engine up, mm-hmm. put it over the thing. You know, we knew how to Eight. we knew how to do it. We we're pros. Mm-hmm. You, know, you, you weren't dropping because... the engine through the hull. <laughs> better <laughs> yeah, better. Yeah. drop the engine through the hull. We knew how to do it all. Yeah. You know, and, so, so. and also to that point too, like we because of how everything else in the past has worked out for us, we thought, okay, this is gonna take us a full weekend. And it took us a day. Yeah. And yeah. that just made it even more wonderful Sweet. for us because yeah now we're starting to yeah. things are starting to come together for us <laughs> that, was, that was seven months into it so like we, yeah we had lifted stuff with the halyards dozens and dozens of times and we kind of had a knack for it up by then you knew but it wasn't it. because we knew what we were doing before we got the boat nope. it was because we dropped the <laughs> outboard engine in the middle of yeah. the water <laughs> yeah yeah T- tell me a bit about um like your your partnership around those types of jobs, because uh, it's something again we get questions about for people that are going cruising together as couples. It's like how do you guys how do you guys work together as a couple on the boat on boat projects? Like, what's the division of labor? Is there somebody that's in charge, somebody that's not? Like, how do you guys how do you guys go about it? Well, like you you make the initial calling of the shots, I yeah. guess, and then I try to look at that and figure out how, how I can help. 
So, yeah. like, I, I have, uh, you know, a mechanical think, you know, kind of thinking and all that, too. It's just, um, uh, you know, I don't have quite the muscle as he does. And, um, um, you know, he, he can look at something a lot faster than me and be able to be like, okay, and, you know, we need to do A, B, C, and D. And, I, and I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Now I yeah. can help out. Um, and also, like, um, I think a, lo- a lot of it too, we, we split jobs to be honest too. Like if he was working on getting that, the engine running, I was in here try you know, in the salon trying to make it a little bit more homey because like just getting that mental, um, aspect of like, okay, it's more like home. Okay. So it, I may have been in the engine room for six hours today, but I'm coming into a more home like feeling like I was sewing curtains. I was, you know, buying stuff for a bed to, so that we had somewhere to, you know, lay Sleep. our head at night. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, a lot of the things like that. Yeah. So you, but you, it sounds like to me, you approached it as a team. There was, while well, there was somebody that was like in maybe taking the lead in certain different areas, by and large, you guys were a team. Um, and well, I think that, yes. yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, that, I'd say like, I'm, I, you know, come up with a plan and, th- and things like that. But like, none of these things I can do by myself, mm-hmm. you know? Cool. So like, like, uh, and, and like, and like has like the technical and like some mechanical ability to like, you know, be able to lift the engine with the, with the boom, you know, and, and slowly lower it down at a place while I'm in the engine room trying to push it into the right spot. You know, she was on the chain hoist, you mm-hmm. know, bringing it down. Um, you know, today she was, she took the first shot at getting the um, generator out, you know, getting, stuff unhooked and yeah. I basically just quit while, because I didn't have the strength I was, anymore <laughs> I was paying and like stuff like that so but it like there's no way I can do all of those mechanical things alone it's just, it mm-hmm. just it, a lot of it takes two hands and yeah you know it, and you know, she has a lot of capability to do those things and, and right. that well and even know. even on top of that too so like the first weekend that we um, own the boat and we could actually start working on it. I couldn't make it to Punta Gorda that weekend. So it was all him. And then when I came out that second weekend to help him out, it, it sounds a little, um, you know, demeaning a little bit, but like all I was doing was handing him tools, but that was, that changed the, the whole, right. everything. The fact that, um, he, he had to go in and out of the engine room to um, get tools. But if I was, you know, with me being there, I was the, the tool hander. You know, right. it doesn't sound it doesn't sound like the most interesting and amazing job, but it so, made his life a lot easier and it made us as a team go faster and you know, less frustration mm-hmm. for like the littlest things. It's yeah, it's super important. It's super, super important to be able to have a, a team member to, to work with you. I mean, it's it's. And I think the one thing that stood out to me in what you, the story you guys were telling me about dropping the outboard in the water, um, and it stood out to me because I, I, I talk to lots of different couples and I hear different things around stories like that. Um, and the language you got you guys used around that was, we did this. We dropped the outboard in the water. It wasn't a, he dropped the outboard in oh, the yeah. water yeah. or she dropped yeah. the outboard in the water. Um, yeah. and, <laughs> and, and that's... I, I think that's huge, and as far as the team teamwork is concerned, yeah. is being able to accept responsibility as a team for the mistakes, not blame them on a on a person, right? So no, you can't take something on like this alone. It's it's it's, it's so hard. So like it, doing it as a team is is super important. It's important to your relationship. It's important to getting the work done. It's like it, it would have taken two years to get to this point if mm-hmm. I was trying to do this by myself. Mm-hmm. Sounds like one of the best things you ever did then in 2019, running into each other. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Okay, so um, so what's the plan now? So you guys, you got the boat in um, down, it was like, put, where was it? What's the name of the place? Sorry, I totally, that you put bought the boat. Fort Myers. Yeah. Fort Myers. Yeah. You had the boat in Fort Myers. Then you've sailed it up. Um, now you're in Fort Pierce, but you stopped on the way, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so we, we did Fort Myers. We, we, we left Fort Myers just before hurricane season, before Ian hit. Well, so that yeah, was but lucky. before the bulk of hurricane season. Yeah. It was technically hurricane no. season. We did, the, we did the lightning strike, too, if you want to get into that. Yeah. That was <laughs> oh, unbelievable. Yeah, I forgot about that. You got um, hit by lightning, right? Yeah. That set us, that set us back. Yeah. But, um, but it also helped us because we were already at a dock 
for um, at that point, so a mechanic could go and look at the lightning strike, so we could talk to insurance, which mm -hmm. honestly saved our boat through Ian. Yeah, because the, it, if it was in that mooring field that we originally came up to, it would have. Yeah. God only knows what would have happened. <laughs> really? Wow. So getting hit by lightning actually saved the boat because you were on the dock it instead kind of, of, yeah, kind of did. you, were, you yeah. instead you, yeah it damaged the boat but and then and also I think you said you had in, yeah. you had insurance yeah. right. Yeah. Leaving Fort, yes. leaving Fort Myers before we, you know, we probably should have been more prepared to save our boat because that boat would have been wrecked in Fort Myers, yeah. you know, and the fact that we got struck by lightning, you know, made us go to a dock for an insurance estimate. We were at a very safe dock for Ian, probably saved us. Um, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. so we think we're unlucky, but then we look back and like, well, maybe we are kind of lucky. Right? Yeah. Like <laughs> okay. So the lightning strike thing happens. That set you back, I assume. But you had insurance, so that yeah, set yeah. Back time everything wise. electrical fried. It ruined everything. <laughs> Engines wouldn't turn on. None of the lights would work. Converter was out. Mm -hmm. Nothing worked. But, like, wow! It, it ruins everything. <laughs> I mean, so we started crazy. over. Yeah, <laughs> but, and we called it the ghost too because not everything went out right away. But over the, like the next month, it started. Yeah, and this is what the mechanic told us too. He's like, that may not be broken yet but <laughs> wait yeah. for it to start going out right. and sure enough it's like oh why is this light not working so like lightning need, strike you need to switch <laughs> everything out yeah and insurance saved us big time mm -hmm. it, like we weren't able to get fully covered because we didn't get a survey or stuff like that but we, so we, we just bought the insurance that we could yeah you know and the, the fact that they gave us something you know and you know maybe like we couldn't afford to have somebody else swap fix everything but what they at least gave us enough money to get new parts you know right. so we could start swapping things out again ourselves right um right. so and we had only bought insurance like two or three weeks before we left <laughs> you know we were like yeah we should probably get it you know we've come this far you know yeah. but, it's a big one a lot it's, a, it's um, a question a lot of people ask is should i insure my boat and um, i mean i always am saying yeah. yes yeah. you know you should yes. definitely insure yes. your boat um <laughs> Get unless, something. Get something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless the value of your boat is like dropping a couple bucks on the floor for you, then you should probably insure your boat. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, Definitely. okay, so lightning strike, but then you dealt with that. Man, you guys have had a mm -hmm. rough go of it. Um, and then uh, and then you went from there up to where you are now. Is that right? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, we hauled out in Key Largo. Hauled out in Key Largo, did a bottom mm -hmm. job, sail drive, and yeah. then swapped an engine out. Um, we ha had a huge uh, hole that we ended up having to yeah. mend in, in the side of the hole. Big football size soft spot that we pulled out and yeah. redid. Okay. Fiberglass and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, then we got, and then we went from Key Largo up the coast of St. Augustine, which is where we wanted to be. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so that now we actually get the, got all the, that, refit stuff behind us we actually get mm -hmm. to start you know living you know at least on the ball you know on the water where we want to be you know and it's just like it's it's really nice like we love we love being out here yeah and it makes and, everything worth it we wish there was an easier way for us but that was just you know those are the cards that we were dealt and mm -hmm. we knew we wanted it so we just we kept doing it and so you're you're now you're just coming up to a year from when you bought the boat yes yeah. yeah. End of and mid mid June will be a year, I think. Yeah. Okay. So so you're so to get to a point, so buying this project boat, let's call it, to get to a point to where you're feeling like, okay, now we're not dealing with so many maintenance issues anymore. Um, we're able to enjoy cruising. It was about a year. A year of yeah. sweat, yeah. toil, and tears. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, and and it could have been easier. I mean. Yeah. When we were we took your class and then you, 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 like it kind of motivated us to you know pull the trigger and buy the boat you know but we we really wish we we kept in touch with you guys because you would have been able to give mm -hmm. us better advice about what's important you know it, even if it's like the bare bones boat you know just to get it to Key West you know like like what what are the important things mm -hmm. like and we we lacked great advice we were kind of doing it on our own you know we had minimal boat experience I only know everyone skips and stuff. Um, like it could have been easier definitely mm -hmm. you know if, yeah. if, if knowing what we know now if we had bought that boat we would have had it fixed up you know in really good condition in like a month yeah, yeah. You know, like <laughs> I, I can't tell you how many times i hear that story not even on like project boats but just on buying any boat you know it's like a year into it knowing what i knew now 
Um, mm-hmm. is it, yeah. is that, and that's what gets you, right? It's, it's what you don't know that you don't know. That's the right. stuff that always gets you. Um, so, okay, cool. So, I mean, that, that's a good segue into, into another question. So what would you say are like, there's two questions I have here. I'm going to start with one. One is, uh, if, if you were to, to, what would you say like the, the top three lessons you learned were in this process, as far as the vote buying process and getting started going the top three kind of top three mistakes you made and then lessons learned out of those mistakes. Um, I think that one, not, not, mm-hmm. not valuing good advice. Cause it's, it is hard to find. Some people yeah. give you really bad advice, Yeah, you know? Um, so like not, like, not, not, I don't want to just say not just sticking with your, like, uh, your class, but just, you know, like, if, not having if somebody you, to support you that knows what they're talking about. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Right. And that, that that was, that was a mistake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, Mm -hmm. I think you guys were really our only lifeline because none of our family knows boats. You know, we 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 should have held on to that, (laughs) should have held on to that like relationship and, and, you know, resource. Mm -hmm. That was, that was definitely a mistake looking back. Okay. I I think at the beginning we didn't prioritize any of the creature comforts. Mm -hmm. It was months before we got lights to work. You know, it was, it was yeah. like, it was months. We hang out was, here with like, a flashlight. Yeah. <laughs> we, we should have scrubbed the bilges earlier because our air quality was bad yeah. for a long time. So make um, it a home first. Like, like creature comforts, because you're going to get burned out because um, the work all day sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, if you don't have something comfortable to come back to, like your life's going to be a wreck. It's going it's, right. to be really, really hard. Right. You can't have some sense of comfort or some sense of routine. I think that's why we went to that same restaurant every day after working mm-hmm. is because like that was a kind of our s- small sense of comfort and routine. You know, we know at the end of the day, like we might not have something, a nice home to come back to, but at least like we have this, my, this restaurant and like, we like the, you know, the server or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. you got, you got to take care of your, like yourself and your comfort. Right. Yeah. Or else it's going to be really hard. Right. Well, and we even had got like a little bit of heat stroke too for the first yeah. couple of weeks, and then we're like, okay, we're going out and getting a window AC, putting yeah. it right over yeah. the we right, right we in the hatch. That day one. Yeah, we, we should have done we that day have one. Sweated like right. that for months, like no, like, but it, so it's take kind care. of similar. Don't don't Sorry. lose don't lose yourself in the project. Make sure that you take care of yourself and what yeah. you need exactly. to to yeah to stay on top of your own well being. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's kind of like what we now know with homes now, um, because we've done it a couple of times now, we have a list of what this needs to be done first, second, third, fourth, fifth, yeah. so on and so forth. And now we look back at this and it's, you know, now we're starting to see it the same way, but boat version of it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I love it. I mean, you guys are going to be top of my Rolodex for anybody that wants to do a, a project boat refit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely okay is there is there another one that you that, that stands out to you it doesn't have to be three i just threw that number out there but is there another kind of misstep or something that along the way that you would have done differently Ooh, i guess no it wouldn't even be a misstep it's it's hard to say we screwed up we screwed up because, right because we knew we didn't know what we were doing yeah yeah you know so we expected like, to so every up. time something went wrong it was, it was just like, like yeah, yeah like, it makes sense like we didn't know better. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. what can, what can we do? Like, what right. can we do? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Right? Right. Yeah. And you did some things so. right. So, I mean, that's the other thing. So what would you say were the big wins were for you guys? The haul out. The haul out was a huge milestone. Mm-hmm. That was cool. Just, you know, see the boat come up out of the water, mm-hmm. you know, and then, you know, get the bottom job and, you know, it started to look like a good boat again. Right. Um, I think marathon was a, a big milestone for us because that gave us the first real feeling of, the boating community, living with the boating community. Like everybody was a family there. And like there was a church, um, like church is a family that, that held a service for people. And like, that just made it seem, you know, like a big mouse and like, Hey, we're, we're getting somewhere. Like, this is where we were. The first sense of that boating community. Yeah. Because after the lightning strike, we limped it to marathon, which was halfway to our Mm -hmm. hallway yard in Key Largo. And we said, you know, we need a like break, you know, mm-hmm. let's stay here for a month. They're going to let us stay here for a month, you know? And so we did that and we just really enjoyed just sitting on the ball, being on the water. It was the first time we got a, like a little taste of the actual lifestyle that we set out to, mm-hmm. to get, you know? So mm-hmm. like, like, I wish we could have 
like you kind of get to we have to stop and smell the roses a little bit. I wish we could have mm-hmm. done that earlier, but it was just that okay. we had so many things that were priorities that we didn't get a chance to do that earlier. Yeah. So definitely, you got us. You got to soak up the, the the lifestyle. You know, even if you are refitting, you know, from time to time. Would you say, like in hindsight, would you say that you guys push really hard? And if you did it again, would you extend the timeline if you could? Like as far as because you, I mean, getting everything you did done in a year is pushing really hard. But maybe it was worth it. Maybe it was just you just wanted to get out of that place. Um, but in, in line with this comment of like taking the time to stop to smell the roses, was is there a way you could have done it less stress with yeah. less stress? Yeah, it would have been nice to extend the timeline or at least know what to prioritize and then things mm-hmm. would have gone quicker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we, we just didn't have that option. You know, we, we were kind of you – know, we were – under pressure to leave Punta Gorda because, you know, we were overseeing our welcome in that guy's backyard and hurricane season was coming. Right. You know, right. and you can only stay, you can only, we can only stay so long in marathon because, um, we, we had to deal with the well, customs. We had to import the boats. We didn't have proper registration. Mm-hmm. So they wouldn't let us stay there for very long until we figured out the import process. Of the the boat. board wasn't, you know, the so boat like wasn't we're, we're imported. Kind of always under some kind of like deadline, mm-hmm. you know, so we didn't have the option to extend it, you know, but it also pushed us to get it done quicker. You know, yeah. we're, we're on our deadlines like now. Like we, we thought yeah. we were going to stay on the ball here in uh, St. Augustine for a year. But they're like, oh, this is more of a transient place. You can only stay three months. And I was like, all right, well, I guess that's okay. It's going to push mm-hmm. us to keep going again. Yeah. You so know, now we're, but, we're setting eyes on Jacksonville, Savannah, Georgia, yeah. Hilton Head. Right. So we didn't. We really didn't have the opportunity to slow it down. I wish we. Yeah. Except we. I wish you know. I wish we found a boat right here in you know Cocoa Beach. You know, so we could. Get out, done with work, and you know, work on it. Right? Mm-hmm. But it's not how it goes. You know. <laughs> um, <laughs> so wait, wait, wait. There was one thing. The boat, the boat was in in the Florida Keys when you got it, but it wasn't imported into it the U.S. Imported. Oh no! It was so it was a it was a St. Martin boat that was in uh, Fort Myers. Okay, um, and then we did, we thought. And then we thought we could import it ourselves, but the previous owner was supposed to import it. Yeah. So we had taken it all the way to uh, Marathon, and then we finally got um, a hold of a customs agent, and he was like, "No, no, like yeah. the previous owner, yeah, do that." Yeah. And they're like, "Oh no!" So we, we walked it all, like we walked it back. And the, the previous owner, he was the greatest guy ever, mm-hmm. you know. So so he, you know, we met up with them and did the paperwork with the broker and stuff like that, and, and it, okay. it was it wasn't that hard. Yeah. Um, but we should have done that in the beginning. Just, yeah, that, that's another know. thing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it wasn't that. The list. I, I, that's an interesting one, though, because so it, it wasn't that big of a deal. Customs didn't give you a super hard time. That's good to know. That's actually so like, good yeah, to know. And so I guess in the in the eyes of like the U.S. and customs, you know, that boat was still owned by the previous owner. Mm-hmm. So we were right plugging around some somebody else's boat. Somebody else's boat. Yeah, that's yes. how they looked at it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the so. the letter of the law on that is if if uh, if a boat like that is even viewed by uh, somebody who's a U.S. resident and it's a non-U.S. imported boat, um, the letter of the law is they impound the boat. So it sounds like you guys got a friendly friendly customs yeah. agent. I think we did. Yeah, we, we thought we thought the deal was like we needed to have it imported within ninety days or whatever mm-hmm. that time or within within something within the month or whatever. So like we tried to do that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't know. They just yeah, they were okay with it. I guess. Yeah. Cool. So. Cool. Worked out. <laughs> cool. So now you're in St. Augustine, um, and you're you're finally getting into the cruising side of things. What would you say, like, if you were to, to talk with somebody who's who's getting started, um, uh, in who's thinking about getting started in the cruising life, uh, and you had to give them one piece of advice uh, on getting started, um, let's say they they don't really know what boat they want to buy or whatever, they're just thinking about doing the cruising life, um, what what would be that piece of advice? If is there a piece of advice that you would want to give them? Um, well you know, obviously they, you know, if they're involved with you guys with the blue water cruising, they're already way ahead on the research department than what we were. But, um, yeah, definitely do your research, but if it's a passion, go for it. Like, you you know, life's short. Why not? Yeah. You gotta, you gotta give it a shot. Yeah. You gotta come up with a plan and start implementing it and and celebrate the, like the milestones, Mm -hmm. like even in the planning process, be like, Oh, like 
you know, we, we have this part of the boat buying, you know, and the, the lifestyle figured out and like, you know, they, and like, you know, that's one step closer to actually getting out there and buying it, you know, so come up with a plan and, and like, just start like knocking things off that list. Exactly. Um, d- do the preparation. We, we do really recommend your course and mm-hmm. Definitely. like just your support and everything like that. It's, 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 it's a really cool thing that you got going on. It, 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 it gave us the confidence because we signed up a second time. We're like, mm-hmm. you know, we finally got the boat ready. And we're like, all right, now, like, I don't have the guts to go sail the thing, you know? <laughs> and so we signed up and talked to you guys and you're like, yeah, just go out and do a lap and come back and you'll feel a little better about going mm-hmm. further next time. That's what you we know, did in like, Key Largo. <laughs> we, we did that several, several yeah, times. Like, <laughs> Even so, did that with your parents. Um, yeah. yeah. Get, get, get the good advice, get the good support system. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of knowledgeable people out there and know that it's, it's not, completely insane there's there's a lot of people out here mm-hmm. you know there's there's catamarans all over the place and like so it's like there's there's you know it's not mo- most people aren't doing this but the, it there are a lot there is people. a big community yeah. doing it so it's it's not yeah. completely absurd to yeah. get it, off the land and just it's crazy but it's not crazy it's, no everybody within the community is is just like all of us yeah yeah yeah, yeah. They it's, all have the same drive, same passion, yeah. same dream. The, you it's, know. it's extremely possible. It's worth it. It's a super special experience. Like we wake up every day mm-hmm. and be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm we're sitting out here. Yeah. You know, and we're excited to be saying we're getting married uh, here in St. Augustine in yeah. October. So really like we like we wake up this morning and we're like, yeah. we can see our wedding venue from here. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Congratulations. That's amazing. Thanks. Yeah. The so honeymoon's like, on the you, boat. I, we don't know. We yet. don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> if there's no more so, projects, maybe. <laughs> yeah, get away from the projects. But yeah, it's it's so worth it, and you're you're seeing everything mm-hmm. from a different perspective. Like like coming into ports, and uh, it's 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 really really cool, and it's it's we're glad we did it, and we hope it keeps working out. We think it will. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we have no reason to believe it won't. Yeah. Any yeah. advice is to put the plan together and, and start doing it. If it's not for you. It's 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 not for everybody, probably. Mm-hmm. But at least like you you got to give it a shot if it's right. if it's in your heart. Well, and also like, like look at your limitations too. Um, you know, if you want to, if if you're not sure, you know, maybe look at a monohull and do intercoastal. Yeah. You know, like we're we're actually like out in the ocean and stuff, and you know that may not be for everybody. Yeah, we like being out there. Yeah. But you know, like yeah, or do the Great Loop. Get a trawler and just do the Great Loop. The great loop. There's a lot of cool options. Yeah. Too. Like we explored them all, but we we wanted the big boat and the blue mm-hmm. water capabilities. Yeah. So that's so we got the catamaran, but exactly. it's it's a really cool world out here. So I love it. If it's in your heart. I love it. it. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I mean, it's that's exactly what it is. And I think to what you said, like if it if you start to take action on it, you put the plan together, you start to take action, you find out really quick if it isn't going to work for you. At, at least that's my experience right. of working with people, you know. And, and we have that people right. come in and and when they start to move forward, they realize either yes you know, every step you take is like either a confirmation that, Hey, yeah, this is right. And I want to keep moving. Or it's like, wait a minute, (laughs) this is not what I thought it was. Maybe we're going to go another direction. Um, but if you don't take any steps, then you never know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's taking you on a journey and it's, it's, it's really cool. We love looking Mm -hmm. back on everything that we did, (laughs) you know, like it's, it's true. It is about the journey because we look back and we're like, like it, it gives a huge sense of like, kind of like pride, Yes. You know, thinking about like what the boat was before and you know like how far we've we've traveled so far on so mm-hmm. like on such a shoddy equipment you know we're able to do it so it's just like it, it, looking back on it like gives us a really good sense of pride and like we're yeah. proud of each other and how we've done it and it's it's been it's been challenging which is good and yeah. It's made us stronger. We, so like, we've been recording a lot too. Like uh, I got him a captain's log, and he writes down everything. So we go back and read those, and it's like, well, you know, looking at that entire journey written down in front of us, or like I make short little videos, and you know, just for just for fun, and you know, we look back at all those little videos, and, and it's just like, can't believe that we were here a year ago, yeah. or here, you know, six months ago, and now we're here. You know, it's that. You know, it's it's a great way to look back at it. That's so cool. Hey, you're, you're living the adventure already. I mean, you've, you guys set out to do it, to have freedom yeah. and adventure mm-hmm. and even, and, and, and the adventure's already started. <laughs> it's like, yeah. that's we're, so we're cool. Gonna keep building. We're going to keep building. It's going to keep getting better. Yep. 
We're going to get a generator here sometime in the next few weeks. We'll have ACs. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, I mean, I, I can imagine, like, the the sense of, of, like, of accomplishment and reward that you must feel for having taken the boat from where it's at to get it to where it's na- where it's at now. I mean, that's not an easy thing to do, and you guys put a ton of blood, sweat, and tears into it, and it's like that, just that feeling has got to feel good Yeah. Um, to have accomplished definitely, that. Really definitely. Does. Yeah, it's definitely something to be yeah. proud of. Definitely, definitely something to be proud of. And and I think that that's like, for me anyway, for in my experience of cruising, like that's when I look back at the, the stuff that I've done cruising, that's the reward. It's like the that internal shift where you're like, hey, I did that. And there's a, a, a massive degree of like increase in self-confidence and ability and self-reliance right. that right. you're definitely. like, Hey, I did this. I can do anything. You know, look what I just did. Like (laughs) that was not easy. That's what we 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 say. We tell ourselves that all the time. It's like I'm like like we can do whatever we want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really gave us a huge like confidence, and you know, I did. You'll have so many more skills too because yeah, for sure, you've learned all the systems of everything that you need to be able to live like off the grid. So you're gonna know. You're gonna learn so much, and Mm -hmm. it's really. It's it's so worthwhile to to pursue it mm-hmm. and that, for many reasons, even if it doesn't end up being like your everything that you thought it was going to be. But it, it's a really cool journey to go on. And that's where the freedom comes from, I think, is that sense of self reliance. You're like, hey, I I know how to do this now, and that there's a massive sense of freedom in that. Hey, I can take care of myself. I don't need yeah. to call the plumber or the electrician. I can do it, you know, and and keep the whole thing going. So super cool, guys. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. I think you got lots to be proud of. Um, I think it's rad. It's a, it, your story is a unique one. It really is. Um, in, in, at least in, <laughs> at least in the universe that we operate in, you know, we don't have that many people that buy, um, project boats down in the keys somewhere and figure out how to get them up and, uh, fixed. So super rad to be able to hear your story and, um, and hear what you've done. It's really, really cool. We also don't have that many people in that age bracket. You guys are in your thirties, which I think is super inspiring as well. Cause we have, a lot of people that I shouldn't say a lot. We have a number of people that do that do inquire with us about cruising in in that that demographic, and it's cool that you've done it. I think it's inspiring for people that are younger that hey, there is a way that you can do this. You know, you don't have to wait okay. until you're 55, 60 years old and save a bunch of money in the bank. Um, exactly, you can exactly. go out and do it when when you're younger. Um, and there is more and more people starting to do that now, especially with what you said, the, the idea of, of being able to work remotely, um, it's becoming a more common thing. So super, super inspiring. It's inspiring for me. I think you guys are going to inspire a lot of people. So thank you for taking the time to share the story. I appreciate it. Um, is there anything that you want to add before we wrap up? Yeah, I want to, I want to show you this thing. (laughs) Do you remember sending us this? Yes, I do. I totally do. That's amazing. <laughs> the, the, you sent this in a, in a package when we signed up for your first class. Yeah. yeah. And I actually used it when we went from uh, <laughs> Fort Myers to Key West because I couldn't we couldn't see our compass on our not on our uh, on our helm. It was, it was... <laughs> and it worked. It actually points. It actually to worked. The right... yeah. yeah, it worked. Wow. I can figure out how to go south with it. Wow. <laughs> cool. Cool. Yeah. I'm stoked you still have that. That's amazing. <laughs> but we appreciate everything yeah. uh, you guys have done for us. Um, your advice is invaluable. Mm-hmm. And we appreciate uh, being on here and talking to you. So um, hopefully you stay in touch here and there. Absolutely. We will. We definitely will. Thanks very much, guys, for uh, for checking out this episode of the Blue Water Cruising Podcast. Uh, if you guys are interested in learning more about the programs that we run, or you just want to have a chat with us about going cruising, go to bluewatercruising.com and click book a compass call. And we're happy to hop on a 10, 15 minute chat and see what we can do to get you guys started. So, uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks again, guys.